Hey guys, this is Russ. Thought it would be fun today to show you how to create a simple riser effect in Cakewalk. Um, I'm going to be using the RGC Audio Square One synth just because that's one of the really basic synths that I think most of you will have if you have Cakewalk. If you're not using Cakewalk but just want to follow along, this should work with pretty much any other synth you have, I would, I would imagine, um, as long as it has an, a noise function to work with. So let me get started and show you what I've done. Okay, so you can see in Cakewalk, I've already got the square one synth inserted here. And if I play a note on my keyboard, beautiful, I guess, but that's not what I wanna do. I'm gonna disable all of the oscillators, disable pitch LFO, EQ, delay, I'm not gonna use any of those. The only thing I'm gonna use is the noise level. That's gonna be my um, sound source, I guess. Okay, you can see, you can hear that it's got still a little bit um, of the, the filter stuff going right when it first starts. So I'm gonna get rid of all the velocity uh, main tuning and then over here the attack delay time sustain release time I don't need any of this stuff so now if I hit it you can't hear anything why because of the cutoff and so that's what we're going to be using for our effect I'm also going to use the resonance a little bit just to make it more obvious. Okay, so once I've done that, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and Alt-3 to see my piano, piano roll. And drag it up, and I'm just gonna add a note, a single MIDI note that goes for the whole far, four bars. Okay, so once I have that, if I just hit play, a beautiful white noise twine tone um, a little bit hot so I'm gonna take it down quite a bit okay so from there like I said I'm gonna be using this cutoff so I'm gonna open my automation lanes and in the drop down I'm gonna go down to square one and that one is gonna be this frequency let me stretch that make it a little bit bigger put that down at the end Put this way up, right about there, give or take. Okay, so already we got a little bit of a riser effect, kind of boring. So the next thing that I want to do is down here the amp LFO. I'm gonna put shape all the way down. I believe right there is just a sine wave shape speed that's what we're going to be automating so I'm going to leave that depth put it all the way up those I don't need but what we're going to be automating is the pan so once I've done that I'm going to go over here add another automation automation lane and that's um, that amp LFO is LFO 3 so I've got to scroll all the way down and find the rate So now if I hit play, nice. So that's a little bit more interesting than just uh, the cutoff automation by itself. The other thing I might want to do, change the curves. And so once I've done that, just to let you hear. So that sounds pretty good by itself. I guess what I would do next is take this uh, bounce to a track. And what that does is it lets me have an audio file. 
And once I do that, then I'll probably um, add a send to, I've already got a delay set up on a bus, but instead of having the whole thing delayed, uh, I'll do the same thing. I'll add a automation lane for the sin level, and then maybe just have it about there. So you have a little bit of the sound carrying over into the next section after you use that riser. Um, the other thing that you can do then is take this clip and maybe make it into a groove clip. That way you can uh, use it at whatever tempo you need. Uh, if you're doing something fast or something slow, it'll just stretch out to fit the music. And then once I've done that, then I'd probably just drag it over to my browser to save it in whichever folder I wanted so that it'd be easily available next time I wanted to use it. Um, so I think that's it. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comments below. Look forward to hearing from you guys, and thanks for watching.